Hi everybody, welcome to Gumpy TV. Hey guys, brought to you by Hobbling Japan. We're in episode 148. 148. And we're sneaking this one in because we're really busy and it's golden week. We're kind of like right in the middle of our holidays. Yes, that's why my Valkyrie's not here. We're just yeah. getting, we're just trying to catch up with work before yeah. we take a short break. And we had a day off before, at the yeah. end of the month when everything comes out. So yeah, yeah. we're playing catch up right now. Yeah, and so. We're really busy. But. But it's but Sid has stuff to show. Yes, I want to get the Exia done, or at okay. least I want to show as much as I've done so far, because I want to have it all shown and presented on Gumpa mm -hmm. TV before we go to Shizuoka. Because Absolutely. when we go to Shizuoka, everything's going to explode, plamo everywhere, and we're Big not Gundams. going to get back to this as soon as I would like. So yeah. the goal is to show this over uh, what I've done so far over this episode and the next episode, uh -huh. and I'll talk about how they compare with the other previous R RGs, which are actually quite a bit different. Sweet. And uh, I'll go into detail on actually how to assemble pa some parts that are kind of tricky. Okay. So for people who are assembling one on their own, they might encounter this issue. We'll talk about that. All right, let me get set up. Okay. All right, everybody, you can see this is what I've got done so far. Not too bad. I mean, RGs do take a little while. I know we're used to one, 144 scale kits being fairly quick, but that's talking about HG. We're talking about RG now, and in some ways they're more compli complicated than even MG. So. I managed to take a couple of days and get this far and already I've noticed quite a few differences than uh, what I'm used to seeing in other RG kits and uh, the majority of that comes down to the frame. So let me bring the frames in shot here. All right, here we go. So this frame, you're not going to recognize what kit it's from. It's pretty standard for most of the seed RG kits. This one's actually from the, the Ale Strike and you can see that it's the Bandai's classic RG frame. Like this leg, it moves and bends the parts move in here but it's all molded on one runner right and the, the feet will come separately they actually go on by the male female connector and you'll put the you'll assemble the foot assemble the leg flop them together and then you'll you'll plug it into the side skirt here like so you know there's a lot of that male female peg connection going on in the the rg frame for the seed kits anyway but uh the exia well it's a it's kind of a different animal here and i want to uh talk about the differences first well uh the big one i noticed right away with a leg frame, there's two actually. Uh, the foot is molded on that frame runner as part of the leg. I didn't put this on, it is here. It does bend, it has a lot of lateral movement and uh, even, uh, even is meant to move a little more. Like you'll hit the end of the ball joint here and this will continue moving if you loosen it up. But I'm gonna leave it like this uh, because I don't wanna run the risk of popping that ball joint out because it's really a solid connection because of how it was molded and I wanna keep it that way. But I do want to show how this uh, leg frame actually uh, goes together. So allow me to pop up uh, this, this frame part here and uh, show you guys. You can see that normal RGs, this leg is one piece, molded as one piece. With the uh, Exia though, you can see that it's two pieces. This actually, uh, this is the top part, this is the bottom part. You slide them onto the frame part here and then close it up. Similar to what you would do with uh, maybe an HG joint or even some MGs, you know, you have to assemble the knee. But once you get in there, of course, the fit is pretty good. Uh, I will also talk about how the uh, skirt goes on here because with the other RGs, as I mentioned, you just pop the peg out, Oop, pop it in when you're ready. You can actually do this many times, assemble, disassemble, assemble, disassemble, depending on how you feel, if you're doing any extra work on it. But with this guy, uh, you're actually popping it into a frame part. It does have the that connection, you know, the, the male-female connection, but this here is all frame. And if I open this up, you can just see how they go together. So let's see if I can pop this off here without breaking anything. They are quite small. And wish me luck. There it is. Now, you can see that there's two RG frame pieces in here. One, this lower part is part of the torso. It actually comes like like this, and then you turn it, when you're putting on here. And this part in here for the, the skirt frame is similar to what we've seen in other RG kits. It actually kind of sits in the, the, the frame part. And then when you plop them together, you just seal it up. So you gotta make sure you push it in all the way. It's kind of a tight fit. Push it in like so. There you go. Now I'm gonna leave it on there, but I will talk about uh, the torso as well because the torso, is also quite different. So here you go. It comes in two parts. Now, now of course, you're gonna put the, the arms on after. I've already done it to show everybody. But uh, you slide this in here like so, but there's a secondary piece that goes on. So that secondary piece is actually from the C runner. And I'm gonna cut it off right here. It's, it's uh, this piece right here. So if I cut it off, 
one, two, three. I can plug it on from the back and you can see it, it's open on the back. That's because it is meant to take the GN drive. Yes, this guy does come with a GN drive that actually fits in there. So for now, we'll just pull out this baby in. And uh, I want to actually show a little bit of the construction for uh, the leg frame, especially because you can see these foil stickers. Well, there's a reason for those. Uh, you actually have to put in these, these other uh, pieces of plastic. These are stickers. I'm going to show you how to get them in, uh, but uh, allow me some time to actually prepare here. So I'm going to shut the camera down. Okay, I finished my prep work here. You can see I've, I've got the stickers in place in preparation for the next part. I've actually added uh, more of the frame parts as well as the start of the uh, off-white armor here. And uh, the frame parts that go around the hip joint. Uh, these actually are interesting because the roundish part actually faces towards the connection with the skirt as opposed to the other direction. Now, you can see on the opposite side, there's this hollow here. Uh, that seems kind of strange when you look at it. And uh, normally, I think with those connections on an RG kit, the mobile suit will have side skirts to kind of cover up this kind of thing. But uh, the Exia, he doesn't, so uh, they've actually had to design something to fill that hollow. And uh, what they've done is they've given you this piece. If you can see it, there's a little tiny like thing, a piece of frame that hooks in there. You actually put it in and then spin it all the way down. So it's kind of narrow in there. I'll have to push it down with my knife. Once it's in there, you turn around and you can see that's the, the effect it gives you. And then you just plug it in here and it's, uh, you have to kind of hold this together while you push it in because the um, strength of the plastic will kind of want to push it apart. Once you get in there, snap, there you go. Now, uh, this next part here, this is going to be somewhat interesting because um, I have to put on these these blue pieces. And by blue pieces, I'm referring to, I'm referring to this. You can see right there now. These aren't stickers. I thought when I first saw them, oh, they're, they're stickers. I'll pull them off and uh, I'll stick them on. And while there is some kind of adhesivity on, on here on the backing, these uh, plastic parts are indeed plastic and they're not stickers, which means to get them on, you have to kind of bend them around. Now, uh, the first the first big one is somewhat easy and uh, we're fortunate because this is the first one you actually put on the Exia. After that, they get smaller and uh, have to bend in different ways. But what I tend to do here is uh, slide it in from this angle first and hold it this way. Now, to actually get it to fit in there, I'm gonna need to bend it but because my hands are far bigger than this little piece of plastic I'm working with, what I ended up doing was uh, using my design knife to just push that ending down, uh, end down as I dropped it into place. And there it is. It's inside here. Now, uh, you have to do the same here, but it's a little bit of a different shape. So uh, we're working with a smaller piece of this blue plastic to begin with, but uh, it's actually meant to cover a different shaped area. But you can uh, put it on the same way. So I'll, I'll pull this out of the way and I'll, oops, I will start as I did with the other one. I'll drop it in here. I should have tweezers, but you know. Now hold it at this angle, make sure it doesn't go anywhere and then push the end down with my design knife to hold it in there. And it's really tough to see this, but it, it doesn't uh, adhere to the the contour of that plastic, the way the foil sticker does. It sits across the top here and uh, that does seem like an issue. And uh, the manual even indicates that when you put on these uh, armor parts, you're meant to push this down as you close these parts together. And I found that uh, that was kind of a, a bit of a chore. Like it didn't seem to want to do what it was supposed to do. I could push it down, I can close it, but it still kind of pops up just a little bit. So you have to be careful. You want to get it as close as, or as pushed down as you can without pushing it too far under one of these sides, in which case you can see it starts to pop up. So this is obviously incorrect. So to fix that, you kind of have to start again. So I will quickly push that back in, starting again. Bear with me. Okay, I'll, I'll stop here. Uh, of course, there's a lot more to do when it comes to the assembly, assembly of the leg, but it's just putting armor on top of other armor, so it's not too tricky. Uh, what I want to show you guys next, though, is the torso, so give me a second. 
Okay, here's the torso I showed briefly before and after you get this piece on to kind of secure it together you need to put on these stickers and whenever you see a foil sticker it means one of those uh, blue pieces of plastic is coming fairly soon so I gotta get one more sticker on here. I'll do that really quickly. These ones are of course stickers, they're adhesive. Uh, you, you need to be careful they don't stick in the wrong spot but you don't have to worry about kind of losing them. They will stay on your design knife and they're pretty easy to just drop into place there like so. Now from here it gets kind of tricky like you are supposed to assemble the torso using these pieces as well. You can see the, there's a spot for a sticker right there. But the first thing you need to do is grab these blue pieces once again right here. These ones one two and uh, you got to be you got to be really careful. So uh, I'm going to pull them out there's actually a piece here that you're, you're meant to leave behind. So you might, you can see this little rectangle, you might want to kind of push it down before you start pulling the piece off. That, that part is meant to stay behind. So there it goes, it stays behind. And uh, this part is tricky. There's a little hook in here that it is supposed to catch onto, but it's kind of hard to reach. So what I ended up having to do before is move these arms out of the way. If you get the arms out of the way, then you can hook these on but you got to be careful like if you these are meant to be pushed down but if you push down when it's loose it's gonna go flying so uh, yeah be very very careful here I'm gonna put this down carefully and get the next one and uh, hope that I can get this together on camera from this angle because I'm usually I hold these things right next to my face but I can't do that when I need to accommodate a camera so put that on there like so and they, you can see they're kind of just hanging there they're only attached by that little hook Okay, uh, the next part is to actually take uh, this piece here, plug it in to the back. Like, that's not a problem. I think you could probably do it uh, before if you wanted to. Hold on, here we go. If you get that piece on from the back, uh, they will actually kind of hold this, these on. They won't fly off so much if you can get that, that piece on the back. Now they're kind of secure. And once you get them secure, now you're going to take the front piece. Now, the manual says that you have to hold these down. Once you hold these down, you're meant to slide this part on. But, if you've got big fingers like me, maybe it's difficult to slide it on. So, what you need to do is just get it started here. So, once I get the alignment correctly, and when I'm looking at this, I'm kind of looking at this center peg here. The center peg has to go in this hole. So, if I can line that up, the rest should line up properly. So get that in there. Once it starts to go, I can release it because it's already pushing down on that blue plastic. I can release this and push it the rest of the way. And there you go. Now I can put on that uh, sticker. I can start adding the armor and I'll have a, a torso soon enough. And there's, there's the effect parts uh, right in the side there. So uh, I will uh, finish that part and I'll catch up to where I have on the other kit. And then next week is going to be all about the arms. So there you go, Ryan. This is how far I've gone and how far we've talked about in the show. Next episode, we'll show the shoulders and arms yeah. and the head, which is actually kind of cool. I've had a brief look at it, as well as the weapons it comes with, which are plated. People are excited about I'm that. I'm kind of surprised. Like This has been so popular, not just yeah. by selling a lot, but just by the interest in the previous video and just yeah. people. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not such a double O fan, but I do like the look of the Exia, mm -hmm. but I've never built the Master Grade, so mm -hmm. I don't know how it compares to some of the other Master Grade mm -hmm. kits. But when they announced the real grade of the Exia, like, the response was overwhelming. Yeah. And uh, I was actually concerned that would, be, would Bandai be able to meet demand? Mm -hmm. But uh, they did. Like, the first day the truck showed up and we, it was all full of RG Exia and everybody went home happy. So. A boatload of, or a truckload of uh, RG? A, a, a truckload of RG, because <laughs> it's made in Japan, it's not transported over from China. No, so. no. no boats involved. No boats involved. Okay, well, we got some questions. Should I hit the questions? Yeah, go ahead. Give me the questions. Okay, the first is from RYC03. Okay. To the person asking about painting the rubber part mm. on the PG Wing Zero's custom waist, that piece is very soft and flexible. I would definitely not want to paint it over. Mm -hmm. If you paint a complete coat over the part, the moment you twist the waist, the paint will crack. If you mm. are just going to dry brush a bit of paint on the edges to dirty it up, though, then it would be fine. Okay, so for those people who didn't watch the episode 147, uh, somebody was trying to figure out how to paint a certain part of the perfect mm -hmm. grade uh, Wing Zero custom kit. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have an answer for them because I never actually tried. So we asked the community to uh, let us know what they thought. And uh, this is just one of the responses. And uh, it seems to be that people are telling this person to 
be careful. <laughs> like, <laughs> you it might not get the result you, you want, so. Yeah, and spraying rubber. Yeah. I mean, I even noticed when the one, with the one tank I built, when I yeah. did spray some rubber mm -hmm. joints, just by mistake. Well, a couple of people answered kind of in the same vein. Yeah. Like, the next comment is also addressing that piece. Okay. So. Let's read it. Mm -hmm. Lol Salama. So, what's it going to take for me to get that RG Zaku poster behind you? We'll run a competition mm -hmm. again. I'm not today, though. <laughs> also, for painting on rubber slash rubber coated material, it will always crack and flake off. I used Aquaflow paint, which is a flexible acrylic paint for airbrush, which lasted a long time, but it will all depend on the movement you do afterwards. Well, okay, so good. this guy's advising the uh, acrylic paint for it. Flexible acrylic paint, so if you can get a hold oh, of that stuff. Wow, we're going pro. To you. Yeah. Next, Edward Mass. Um, okay. Sydney, Sid, yeah. I'm saddened to hear of the lack of Slurpee available to you folk on your side of the world. Yes. It sounds more like hell Travesty. than heaven at your 7-Elevens. Dude, mm -hmm. you have no idea of how awesome 7-Elevens are in Japan. <laughs> Convenience stores are pretty good around Yeah. Here. Like they will feed you yeah. at a very good price here. Yeah. And full, good full food. meals. Yeah. yeah. You have, they even have their like special section of like high-end cakes. Yeah. And yeah. sauces and stuff. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a... Another, another sad level. slurpee though but. yeah <laughs> i will raise my slurpee with a sad heart and pour some for my homies on the east side yeah. <laughs> that's cool uh, yeah. <laughs> it's cool that you read all those these and glad you find some humor in our banter on a yep. serious note said what would your favorite rg kid be today just curious thanks for the great show again yes yeah, so uh while i now lament my lack of slurpee again it's getting hotter now in japan already um RG, you know, I'm in the middle of building one. I haven't yet uh, determined how much I like it, but so far so good. But still, I'm, I think I have two that I would put at the top. One would be the, one would be the uh, GPO one, full burning. Mm, the yeah, Zephyranthus yeah, yeah. is also good, but I like the full burning. And uh, also uh, this guy, the Mark II. I think the Mark II is another fantastic kid. And interestingly, they share the same frame. So oh, if you're okay. building one, you would have no problem. Yeah, well, the full burn transforms. So it's a little different this far, but, <laughs> you know, so I do dig the, the Mark IIs, though. Uh, the Titans or the AUG. They're both good. Mm. And for the final comment, yeah. Slater for you. Hey, Sid and Ryan. So if we've already four months into the year, since mm -hmm. it'll be five. It is five today. And there mm. have already been some pretty nice MG kits released and announced. Mm. What do you think will be the big kit of this year? I know. That one standout that one standout MG that would make everyone go nuts for, I know, I would absolutely go nuts if Bandai decided to shock the world and drop an XC, Z Gundam, Z Gundam or Mark V out of the blue. Yeah, so I think he's asking what would, what would be the big MG this year. That's and not the one that we might see at the show. Well, that's it? an HG kit. It's going to be the biggest kit of the year yeah. for sure. It's going to um, be huge. But that's, I think if he's referring to MG, I'm in kind of the same boat as him. It's like, I don't know. I don't like, know. Uh, Maybe it's his. It's, it seems that Bandai has these periods of time every year where they release the big kit. And it always usually is before a holiday. For example, Golden Week. The week before Golden Week, we get the, mm -hmm. the new RG, the XC, right? And, uh, and just before Oban, there's a big kit released mm -hmm. in the summer, which might be that big new Zeon. I'm not quite sure. I have to look at the release date again on that. And then before our winter holidays, you get the big MG or the, just the big release of the, so release of the year. So... Uh, the perfect grades will come out in December. That Sasabi we had last year came out in December. Mm. So you have these three periods of time where Bandai's putting out the big stuff. Mm. So so far we've had the Exia, so we know kind of what it is for Golden Week, and we can assume what's coming for the summer with that Neo Zeon, unless Bandai surprises us. I mean, we do have the Turn X coming, but uh, the big big one that's going to come in December we don't know yet. PG, please. Yeah, I'm hoping it's a PG. I mean, yeah, give us a if PG. They're gonna give us a what is it, 21,000 yen HG kit? Like, come on. Yeah, Bring out the PG. PG. I'm ready. Come I'm on. Ready. Yeah, I'm we're ready. ready. Economies have recovered. <laughs> yeah. The yen is considerably down. Yeah, give us a gold plate. Good amount of time. <laughs> yeah. No more gold plate stuff. Yeah. Just no, no, sorry, just okay. what I just said. All right, so let's talk about giveaways. Yes. That's what everybody's come to see, right? Yeah. Okay, so. They don't care about us. Just yeah. the prizes. Just now that we're giving up prizes, man. Yes. Yeah, Traffic so. and comments everywhere. <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> Not, oh, no, I'm not supposed to show that one yet. Okay, I was supposed to show this one. You didn't see that. Yeah, don't worry. Okay, so we were going to give away the Reborns and the oh, Valbrae. Here they are. We showed them last episode, so I'm not going to open up the box. Okay, I'll take those line. from you. you. Take those. Oh. Okay, so. Bang. We had 328 comments. 
as of the filming of this episode. And so, uh, my good friend, Mr. Random Number Generator, Don't call always, give them credit. Random org, dot org, whatever it is, <laughs> always comes to bat for me. Anyway, I said, pick a number between 1 and 328. And uh, Random Number Generator gave me number 16. 16. 16. Number com comment number 16 belongs to Lockdown414, who said, once again, a good ep of Gunpla TV. Can't wait to see the RGXia. So there, verily, it came to pass. Lockdown 414. Yep. You have yourself a couple of kits. I'll be sending you an email in a few days, and uh, you'll just have to give me your address, and just, I will mail these to you. Just a reminder to everyone: it's comments on the blog hobbylink.tv right. Hobbylink on this TV. episode. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, don't. Mm -hmm. You can still comment on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We always say this, but yeah, Hobbylink TV. Yeah. That's Avoid where the, the action's at. Hobbylink TV is a good place to be. <laughs> yeah. Hobbylink TV, the place to be. That's on your tagline. Freebies. Okay. Uh, okay. What's next? Next, uh, mm. they kind of already showed it. Whoops. Uh, seeing as I was talking about RGs oh, today, yeah. I'm going to give away an RG now. Sweet. Um, if my memory serves me correctly, and usually it does, although sometimes I'm wrong, uh, the, I think we brought this guy out way back when in one of your first episodes, Ryan, when you were really? joining me here. So was that when I was building the Yamato? I think uh, this had just come out, and we were talking about how to do kind of like, with simple tools, do battle damage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, we yeah. kind of... Okay. Damaged up the, the frame or the shield and scratched it up a little bit. So I, I never got around to actually finishing it because we were mostly showing the damage part. So somebody's going to get this and they can finish it themselves. Yeah. Everything is in there. Show us some pretty battle damage. Yes, there you go. There's and one. along with the Zaku, I'm going to give out. Now I don't have an XC to give out. I haven't built one yet other than this RG. So next best thing. Ooh, MG Double O Riser. An MJ. MG Double O Riser. Now this guy is in pieces. You're going to have to put some work into him because. <laughs> Okay, everything's still in there, right? Yeah. I was kind of goofing around with a kick bash, <laughs> thinking, you know what I could do? I could mix up my O riser with the double quanta and kick bash it up. But I never got around to doing it, so I put them all back apart, and there's part of the uh -huh. riser there. Yeah. So, so this will be a this will keep be you busy. a work in progress. Everything's yeah. there, I believe, maybe. And uh, you have <laughs> all the extra parts I haven't got around to, and the manual. So you will be able to build yourself the double O riser. Along with the Zakus, whoever's winning this week's stuff gets it's to a do good some week. building. It's a good week, an RG yeah. and MG. Like that's yeah. that's a solid giveaway. A solid giveaway right there. Put that over here. Some assembly required. Exactly. Okay. So next so, week, next week, latter half of our Exia. Yeah. We're gonna have it done. We're gonna talk about it and our thoughts about it, and then. Sure. Well, I guess I shouldn't say next week. Next episode because next we'll episode. be in Golden Week, yeah. and who knows when we can yeah. get in front of the camera again. Next episode. We're going to talk about the episode, uh, Exia episode after that. We will be in Shizuoka. Expect video from us, uh, well, tweets, yeah. Facebooks, yeah. pictures, pictures, images. Just expect yeah. the works. Yeah. Just a reminder to everyone: we have a social media, we Facebook, have, YouTube. Like us, friend us, comment us. Yeah. Obeying TV, we have some great groups, great yeah, community yeah. happening. Did you there. see the? Oh, you might not have seen it because you were not interested. But uh, somebody created a group on Obeying TV uh -huh. for Canadians. Yeah, I saw that one. I joined. I probably deleted, but they don't. I joined that group. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we have a lot of groups. Uh, but yeah, thanks for everyone who actually takes part in, in Hobbiting TV. We yeah. really do appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's all I need to say. That's it. Okay, well, I've already said my piece. Okay. So let's leave it at that. We'll see you later. See ya.